Welcome to the six easy handicapping steps to finding winners. No matter what your level of experience, it's often wise to get back to basics when handicapping the horse races. Everyone handicaps differently, but we're going to cover the following six steps, which should always be addressed before making a wager. They're presented in the order of importance and should be followed in that same order. The six steps are form, ability, class, race conditions, connections, and breeding. I'll go through the six steps while showing you how to use today's Racing Digest race sheets to handicap each of the steps. The first step to finding winners is handicapping form, which is basically the fitness level of the horse. Nothing else really matters if a horse is not in form. When handicapping form, you will want to go through the race and eliminate those horses that do not appear to be fit from a condition standpoint, either through recent racing or workouts that suggest the horse is set to run its best. When using the race sheets, look in the horse's data box where the horse's past performances are listed for up to the last six starts. To determine recency, check the date of the last few starts. To determine how competitive the horse was in each race, check the horse's final finish position by looking under the finish position and beaten lengths column. To determine what type of workouts the horse has been doing, look at the workouts which are shown in the horse's data section of the race sheets. The information includes the track, the date, the time of the work, the condition of the surface, and how the work ranked relative to other times recorded that day. You will also want to eliminate any horses that haven't raced in 30 or more days unless the horse or trainer has a history of performing well coming off layoffs or the horse has had a number of workouts to suggest the horse is fit from a condition standpoint. To determine how a horse performs following a break, look at the horse's past performances and identify any breaks in the horse's past racing. You will then want to see how the horse performed in that race following the break by looking at the finish position column. The race sheets make it easy to determine how a trainer does with horses coming off a layoff. To do this, you will want to look at the trainer stats in the race sheets under the horse's data box. If the horse has not run within 30, 60, or 90 plus days, or the horse is making a second or third start after 90 plus days, you will see the percentage of wins along with the number of starts, wins, places, and shows for the trainer for each layoff condition. Any horses that don't fit these wide parameters should be eliminated from further consideration. How fast can the remaining horses in the field run on their best day? That's the next question to be answered. There are many different ways to evaluate talent in this era of speed figures and performance ratings. It doesn't really matter which ones you use, but you should be consistent. You will want to determine two things. What is the horse capable of doing? And more importantly, what does it figure to do today? Those horses that do not figure within three lengths of the top contenders in the race can be eliminated. To determine the best each horse has done at today's race distance and surface, look in the race sheet header in column 12, where you will find the best comprehensive performance rating the horses earned for the surface and distance of today's race. To see how the horse performed in his last race, look in column 15. The higher the number, the faster the horse ran. To see how the horse performed in his last six races, you can find the CPR the horse earned in each race in the horse's data lines under the CPR heading. To see how the horse performed in its last 10 races, the final race equation or the fire number for up to the horse's last 10 starts are listed in the horse's data lines next to the heading last 10 fire. Just like the CPR, the higher the number, the faster the horse. Now that you know what the horse is capable of doing, let's determine how he figures to do in today's race. To determine what the horse is expected to do today, look in the header in column 5 where you will find the CPR the horse is expected to earn in today's race. You can also find the fire number the horse is expected to earn in today's race in the fire num column in the race header. The next step, handicapping class, is a tricky part of the puzzle since horses can improve and regress quickly. Often outclassed horses will be eliminated in step two. But in the case of horses stepping up in class off an impressive effort, it's necessary to analyze how those figures were earned. Past class is a big handicapping plus and is often overlooked by many players. 
The Ray Sheets makes handicapping class easy by converting the class levels to a simple number system which allows you to easily compare the quality of one class of horses from another. You will find the race class level for today's race in the top right hand side of the race sheets. The higher the number, the higher the class level and ultimately the more difficult the competition. You can find the race class level the horse ran in his last race under column 3. You will want to compare this number to today's race level to quickly determine whether the horse is moving up or down in class and by how much. In addition, the highest race class level the horse has been competitive in over the last 90 days can be found in the fourth column under RCL. If there is an X in this column, it indicates a horse hasn't been competitive at any level within the last 90 days. You can also find the highest class level the horse has ever been competitive in by looking in column 13 titled past class. Finally, you can see what race class levels the horses run in past races by looking in the data lines under the RCL column. You can compare this number to the race level in the race header and other RCLs to see if this horse has been moving up or down in class and by how much. The fourth step in handicapping to find winners is understanding if the horse likes today's surface and distance. Even horses that are in form and have the ability in the class to win are generally beaten when entered into unsuitable races. The race sheets make it easy to see if a horse has performed well in today's race conditions. If we look in the horse's data box, you will see how that horse has performed on today's track at this race surface and this race distance. You will also see how the horse has performed in today's surface and distance. The records are listed as the number of starts, wins, places, and shows. The human part of the equation is substantial. True, a great rider and accomplished trainer can't win on a bad horse, but by this stage you should have eliminated the bad ones. However, good horses can be beaten by a jockey's poor decision or by a trainer who has a hard time cinching up the saddle correctly. Some trainers tend to do well in certain conditions, certain moves, or with certain types of horses. Let the record guide you in this area. Eliminate horses trained or ridden by traditionally low percentage stables or jockeys. The race sheets show you how a trainer does with any moves he is making with the horse in today's race. In the horse data box is a list of all the pertinent trainer stats you'll need to understand how a trainer has been doing in the last 15 starts, as well as how they do with any moves they'll be making with this horse today, such as going from dirt to turf or a route to a sprint and so on. It is true that the top jockeys tend to get to ride the top horses. To know if the trainer and jockey team has had success, look in the horse's data box for the trainer and jockey success rate over the past three months. This will show you the horse's trainer and today's rider along with their number of starts and then the number of wins, places, and shows. Pedigree analysis is only significant when analyzing a horse that has not had the opportunity to show what it can do under today's conditions. The only time you should concern yourself with breeding is when a potential contender has survived the first five steps of this procedure. The breeding stats for each horse can be found in the horse's data box in the race sheets. When looking at the breeding stats, the first number is the horse's age, followed by a sex. After the dash, the horse's sire is listed. In parentheses, is a sire's offspring's win percentage on turf, synthetic, and in the mud. This is followed by the horse's dam, which is then followed by the dam sire. After completing these six steps, you should have eliminated the pretenders and whittled down the field to the contenders. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it helpful and learned a little something. Of course, at any time you have any questions, feel free to email us or give us a phone call. Our contact information can be found on our website at todaysracingdigest.com.